Hey, what's good YouTube? Target here and welcome to the final episode of Design and Manage my City Skylines and Modded Let's Play series. On this episode we are going to do a city tour where I go through every single corner of the city and explain to you what we have done uh, over the last year and a half. So stay tuned for that. This was my first Let's Play series that I've started on the summer of 2017 and I have recorded myself building it and this footage is spread across 85 videos that you can see by checking on my channel. Also, this city will be available for download on the Sim Workshop, so don't forget to check out the video description for that. But anyway, let's start off with the tour. Let's start off with this island. This is where I've started building the city. This was my initial interchange. This is a um, stock map that came with the Snowfall DLC. It's called Icy Islands. And this red face just means that we lost a football match, but I'll show you the state right in a bit. So in this map, Icy Islands, you pretty much start uh, with this tile unlocked and you only have the option to start building in this little area. So that's exactly what I've started. I have started with an initial interchange that I've later remodeled into what it is right now, this uh, spaghetti interchange over here that is working very well. And this thing was pretty much my first residential layout. I remember I started building my houses here and then this little thing here that is now my um, very fruitful commercial district was my initial industrial district. Later on as the city grew I have demolished the industry and moved it to this area right about over here and I've turned this into commercial. Uh, the funny thing or the interesting thing about this island is that I have started playing the city in this island and I've also finished playing on a city in this island. So this was my initial layout, but this corner over here at the left side was my final layout. So you kind of see uh, the evolution of my uh, building techniques uh, over the past year and a half. I would say that the layout on the left is much more organized and much more uh, structured. So I kind of learned a thing or two uh, while I was playing this city. But anyway, let me take you a closer look to this little uh, city. Um, yeah, as you can see, this is all low residential. I have put a lot of pathways, I really love pathways, I think they do uh, amazing things for the game because citizens love uh, walking through pathways, makes it a lot easier especially when it comes to traffic because it reduces congestions. Going on to my commercial district, uh, I have uh, quite a bit of things to talk about here. Uh, one of them is actually my public transport, perhaps that's something that I can show you right now. Uh, we have a lot of things going on here. First, we have a blim stop, one out of three. We have a total of three blim stops on our town. Uh, the blim stop connects this uh, area of uh, the island over here back to uh, another commercial area right on the main part of town. And finally, we have a final uh, blim stop on uh, what we call the leisure island, which is the island where we have a lot of unique buildings. Then we also have a metro connection, there is only one metro station in this entire island uh, which connects back to this commercial district. From this station people can then catch uh, one of several bus lines that you can see spread all across the district to go to their houses and to other parts of the island. So that's pretty much how the public transport in my city works. I connect long distances with metro or train and then I use buses for local transportation to bring uh, people from the stations to their houses and vice versa. Overall, I believe uh, everything is working pretty nicely. There's a few instances where we have a lot of people waiting for the bus at the, the stop, but nothing to worry about. As your city grows, it starts getting more difficult and difficult to um, manage every single transport line that you have but I am pretty satisfied with what we have so far. I've also took advantage of this area to place some unique buildings such as this one for example, the old Market Street that came with, um, I believe it's the Park Life DLC. 
and I also have this little mall of moderation. In this little roundabout I even put the road maintenance depot, which um, makes uh, your cars travel faster. If we move back to the coastline I've tried to do a bit of work here, uh, the most relevant part is when I introduced ferries on the city, so this is the first ferry stop that we have built, I believe. And uh, I've tried to put a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some restaurants and also marinas alongside the coastline of this area. For this, I had to lower the terrain using the custom terrain tools that came with the game. And I've tried to make this, um, this very stable coastal road uh, that is right above the sea level. So I'm pretty happy um, about the way this has turned out. Moving on to the left side of the highway, uh, what we have is the, is the continuation of our residential suburb. And uh, this, I, I, I've started building this right when the Green Cities DLC has just came out, so I have a district dedicated for uh, organic produce when it comes to um, commercial. It's not that relevant right now because we have a much better and much bigger uh, organic and local produce district right on the other side of town. But um, uh, what I want to talk about is that I have built this little uh, pathway, elevated pathway, that connects both the districts. And it's uh, kind of used by people, not a lot right now, but I remember when I first built it, we had a lot of people crossing from one way to the other. Um, I believe this is because we had a lot more public transport options and now people have other ways of getting into this side of town. Another relevant thing that we have to talk about is uh, this little triangle. This was my first attempt to build a winter themed park, because this is a winter map, so I wanted to explore the, that possibility. We have built um, some parks related to winter, such as the skating ring, the curling park, the uh, ski lodge and uh, finally the sledging hill. Later on uh, I've built a much bigger and much more effective winter town that I will show you in a minute. Alright guys, moving on to this area, uh, the right side of the island, we have um, quite a few things to talk about. First, this was the first area of town where I've built my disaster response unit. This is when I've started having my first disaster, so I've put it right here. Uh, I've also added another uh, ferry stop and I've put a lot of um, the water pumping stations right on this corner and later on in this corner as well. So this is the water supply for our city. What we have right on the center are a bunch of farms using the Industries DLC. When I first started this was just a regular um, industry specialization but when the Industries DLC I've completely remodeled uh, this entire uh, thing. I kind of went overboard with this little farm, I've put a bunch and a bunch of buildings, perhaps a bit too much than this area can hold on when it comes to traffic, because uh, we have a lot of trucks on the road, but for this layout, for the size that it has and for the amount of buildings that it has, I even think it's behaving uh, very very well, so I don't see any car congestions um, anywhere. And uh, by the way, let me just click on the farm and we can see that we are making a total profit of 26,000, which is uh, amazing. This is really outstanding and the industries in this city have become kind of like the um, major source of profit for our, our city. You cannot really see that because we are on the ne negative slope, but that is because uh, the way industries work in this game is a very, uh, very situational. So you kind of have moments where you are not selling anything and then you are incurring in a loss, just like you have right now. But there, there, are, there are other moments where you sell a bunch of products and that uh, puts you on the green side um, by a large margin. I've had moments where I, I was making a profit of 70,000. In the long term, this city is set up to accumulate money, so if I just um, don't do anything, I will see my budget increase and increase over time. This farming area also has a cargo station that I've put here and this was a big challenge because I pretty much had to bring the uh, railroad uh, all the way from this side of town uh, because this was the only train connection that we had and I had to bring it all the way over here uh, pretty much through this uh, bridge that crosses this river and then through this bridge again 
then I had to go and adjust it to the interchange that we had. So I had to make it fit to the existing interchange and I had to bring it all the way over here. Doing this without any mods was uh, really challenging, but I've managed to pull it off. Speaking of trains, uh, later on in this town I've also built another train station here, another uh, cargo terminal, and that was because I've also built this huge uh, forestry industry that pretty much occupies um, almost the entire left side of the island. Again, this is also something that I've done when the uh, Industries DLC has come out. And this particular farm right now is making a total... Uh, you could see it a minute ago or a second ago, it was 10,000, now it's only making uh, 5,000. As I've said before, there is a lot of fluctuation uh, when it comes to uh, industry performance. As you can see, I have a lot of buildings, sawmills and also greenhouses uh, that are specific to this type of industry. I've also built this soft paper factory that occupies this entire space. And finally, on this side of town, we have the latest and my most recent residential uh, district. As I've mentioned before, it looks much more organized uh, than our previous districts. I really like it. it. It kind of follows the coastline and is pretty much set up in layers. You can see it. Uh, right as you look at it, which um, seems very, very organized. I really like it. I have also put this um, bus and ferry exchange stop because it is the only way for people, or pretty much one of the only ways for people to go from this island to other parts of town. And we have a lot of people, as you can see here, using it. We have a lot of people waiting for the ferries. And in some cases, yeah, look at this, we have a lot of people transitioning from the buses to the ferries. So it's working very well, as intended. Alright guys, moving on to other parts of town, if we go a bit to the north side, we have this little island here, that uh, I wish I could have built anything, but, but I did not have enough available tiles to purchase, so I could not purchase this tile, so I could not build uh, a lot of things. The only thing that I've done was a place this shipyard uh, that is pretty much um, used to build ships, as the name indicates. And I've also have a a few um, eco water treatment plants because I did not have enough room in the next area that we are about to see, which is our main industrial sector. So this area is the area that gave me the most headaches throughout the entire series, especially when it came to traffic. Because even though I planned uh, the road layout before I built the industry here, when the new Industries DLC has come out, the traffic in this area has exploded exponentially, especially when I started building on this northern part of the industrial sector, which kind of made the traffic uh, move much more aggressively. Uh, a couple of episodes ago, I have remodeled this entire area for traffic and it's now running much more smoothly, even though you can see that, that there are some areas where traffic is a pretty much um, a problematic, such as, for example, this roundabout over here. The traffic is flowing, but uh, very, very slowly. Also, trucks uh, slow down when they have to go to the, to the station. But we'll talk about this in a second. Let's move on to this area. So this industrial sector has uh, a canal that goes and cuts, cuts it in half pretty much and takes this entire square and uh, takes it away from the mainland. And I've done this because this is the canals where I wanted to put all my water treatment plants. So as you can see here, uh, pretty much all the water treatment plants that I have on the city are here. Uh, when I did not have room to place any more, I have simply placed them over here in this island as I've showed you before. This area also has our cargo harbor, the only cargo harbor in this city. And I also have our ferry depot right about over here. If we go on to the right side of town, we have the harbor of the city, which is pretty much the only harbor that the city can have, and also a small uh, commercial sector. Now you might be asking, Target, why do you have your harbor, uh, which is a place full of tourists, right next to your industrial sector? 
Tourists pretty much come here and the first thing they see is, is pollution. Well, there's a very simple reason for that and that is because uh, this is the only t area in my town that has access to uh, the regional ship line. So there is no other place in my city where I can place the harbor. That's why I've put my cargo harbor over here and my harbor right next to it because these are the only two places where I could have done that. As you see this creates kind of a mess with the original line as you can see here all the ships are um, getting stuck in one corner. This is not my fault this is um, I believe it, this is a problem uh, with how the game or how this map was developed. But uh, anyway, if you wait long enough, ships then uh, start and move uh, freely. Another thing that sucks is how ships are supposed to go through the middle of this conglomerate of rocks, like it's the most natural thing on Earth. But it, for me, it would just create a bunch of Titanic-like situations. But um, anyway, moving on. Uh, when people get out of the ships, they pretty much have a metro connection here that they can get. And this metro connection has access to the entire city. So people, when they get to the city, they pretty much have the option to go anywhere in town. I have a secondary metro connection here that fits uh, this whole industrial area. And the next metro station connects right in our uh, public transport hub that I will speak about in a minute. If I take a closer look, I can see a bunch of people getting out of the metro system right to go um, into our harbor and we can also see a lot of people getting out from the harbor and going on to the metro station to go to other areas of town so there are moments where we have a lot of ships coming and stacking on top of each other uh, which is kind of ridiculous but the results are well we have uh, hundreds and hundreds of people coming out of the uh, harbor at the exact same time and our metal line kind of gets congestion in, in a way but um well it works that's what we have so that's what we have to deal with but anyway moving on this area is also where we have our main sources of power we have two nuclear power plants operating and i also have some trash management facilities we have a couple of landfills and also some recycling centers a bit more to this side we have a couple of factories we have the lemonade factory, the industrial steel plant, the printing press, we, had, we have a lot of stuff actually. Then we also have the furniture factory, the sneaker factory and the clothing factory. So this, I, I've used these factories that have come out with the industry ZLC to kind of complement our uh, industrial uh, sector. Because I believe this was a good location for these types of building. Now moving on to this northern part. Uh, I have two districts over here, uh, if I can find them. I have a district dedicated to ore and I also have another district dedicated to uh, oil. The thing about these districts is that they do not um, have extraction um, buildings because this area as you can see does not have any ore or oil underground. So the way this works I only have a lot of production buildings and these buildings import the oil and ore from outside the town and they convert it into final products. So that was my uh, approach to these types of uh, industry. And if we see, uh, they are both running on a, prop, on a profit. This one right now is making about for, uh, 4,600 and this one is making uh, 20,000. So, so you can definitely have an effective and profitable um, industrial site even if you don't have the natural resources to go with it. I have also have a lot of buildings that are turned off because uh, I could not uh, satisfy the demand. So all of these buildings were importing a lot of uh, resources from outside of town and my city could not import fast enough to feed all of these buildings. So I kind of had to disable a few of them. I could simply delete them all but um, First and foremost, I wouldn't have anything else to put in these locations and I kinda like them to keep as decorative parts of this part of town. If we go a bit to the right side, I have my eating uh, system. So this is where I have all my geothermal plants and also my boiler stations. These are the facilities that provide heating to the entire town because this is a winter map and we um, 
are required to have eating, as you can see here. Otherwise people will complain and they freeze to death, we do not want that. And finally, on the central part of our industrial sector, we have our cargo hub. Here trucks can either use this station to um, import or export goods from other parts of the city, or they can use this station to import or export goods from outside the city. So this station is connected to outside uh, the town, but this station over here does not have um, an outside connection. It only connects to other cargo stations in town. For example, if we keep moving forward, uh, you kind of have the, the choice to uh, split into two. If you go to the right side, you go over this loop and you go all the way over here uh, to our uh, initial island, as I've showed you before. And you can either go to the left side and go to our forestry industry or go to the right side and come to our uh, farming industry. So this is pretty much a way from these two uh, industries, the um, forestry and also farming, to bring final products, not final products, but um, raw materials to uh, these factories on the north side and also the bottom side. And also for these factories as well. This cargo station also connects to other station. So if instead of going right, you go uh, and you keep you go left and keep moving forward, you go through here. You go through this mountain that I have terraformed. I will talk about it in a minute. You go over and cross the entire city. You go over this park and will eventually connect to this cargo station over here that is located in our main uh, commercial area of town. So. This rail is also a good way of uh, sending goods from our factories to our commerce. So that was the way I've planned my city and it's working uh, very, very effectively. If I go a bit to the left side of our industrial sector, we have a couple of things to talk about. Uh, the first thing is the car factory that I have um, placed on the later stage of town. And I also have our public transport hub that occupies this entire area of uh, the city. As the name indicates, the public transport hub is where people can cross from one type of public transport to the other. And I have quite a bunch of them. So if I go to the public transport tab, we can see that we have ferries uh, and this ferry station connects to every single uh, coastline of the town. I have one station here and an another one here, just, just as we saw when we were looking at this island. But then I also have other stations or other stops on this island, this island and also throughout this entire coastline. Another um, option that we have is actually trams, where people get out of the trams right about on these uh, couple of stops here. And the trams connect to our industrial sector. As you can see, we have uh, the line coming through this uh, loop and then bringing people all the way over here and also um, to our residential district right next to the uh, industry. And also brings people throughout the entire coastline of this area. And it kind of brings people all the way over here to our winter themed island or our winter winter themed park that I will show you uh, in a bit. I also have a couple of metro stations as you can see here. One of those stations connects to the line that we have already saw that connects back to the arbor and that particular line keeps moving forward and it pretty much feeds the entire coastal area of uh, this uh, of this city. It has a lot of stops along the way and it also connects to other metro lines. For example, this one, uh, which is um, intersects with a line right about over here in this station and goes all the way until this uh, train stop or this train station right on the edge of town. And then we have another metro line here 
uh, that brings people to this uh, little island over here. Um, the island that we have already seen and also to uh, the leisure island that we have. So the city is pretty much uh, entirely connected with metros. Then I also have this little taxi depot here and I have put this main building here which is the monorail bus hub. As the name suggests, this thing connects with a monorail uh, that we can see here pretty much. And I also have a bunch of bus stops. Uh, let's start off with the monorail. When I envisioned this town, I knew that I would want um, a circular monorail that would provide access to the entire city. And that's exactly what I, what I have created. I have created a circular monorail line that kind of wraps around the entire city. We have the first station right on our beginner island, as we have seen. And this line kind of goes um, across uh, town, kind of on the back side of our commercial sector. Then kind of goes through this way, it connects to this little island. And it goes all the way into our leisure island. And all the way over here and it goes back to the mainland where we have a bunch of stops. Oh, and by the way, I should um, start emptying these cemeteries so that we are better prepared when we have a death wave. And the monorail kind of goes and starts turning at about this area where it has a station over here and it connects to these train stations. And it starts going around, goes through this massive landscape unit that I've built and it has a station right in front of the stadium. And it goes back and connects to the public transport hub. So that's that. Then we also have finally a couple of um, bus lines that I have taken and considered as regional lines. So these bus lines have the function of taking people from the uh, public transport hub and bring them to very specific corners of town, which are usually places very far away from this area. But anyway, let's take uh, out this view and see how everything is flowing. We can see a lot of people getting out of the metro station and going to our uh, several stations. We also see a bunch of people going through this elevated pathway uh, that connects to our uh, tram lines and also to the um, ships. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. Everything here is connected with pathways. People get out of the um, ferry stop, as you see, and they pretty much cross the um, the road on this crosswalk and they have to use this pathway to go to several parts of town. Over this bridge they, can, they have access to both uh, tram stops which are um, in this side or they can even go and cross this bridge over here which will bring them to the metro stations and also the monorail and bus line. Overall I am really proud of the work that I've done in this area. When it comes to planning when it comes to decoration and also when it comes to terraforming, I think I've done a really, really good job. And this area is really unique in the way, uh, for example, you have the trams which are kind of underground. Uh, so I had to terraform this entire thing and um, build a bunch of tunnels that connect the tram line to several locations. This is actually my tram depot which uh, brings the trams uh, through this road and all the way over here downhill and it connects to this um, tram track which kind of then connects to the to the main tram infrastructure so to say then i have another tunnel over here that goes under the uh, main pathway connection through this entire mess and it comes out over here so as you see i've tried to incorporate a lot of terraforming in this build and I'm really satisfied uh, with the result. Especially when you take into account that all of this was built without uh, any mods. I also really like how uh, these entire trees and also rocks fit the scenario uh, quite well. So this is one of my favorite parts of town. Then just to wrap up this entire thing, I've also built a couple of commercial shops uh, on this location just to provide a bit of leisure to the people who uh, happen to come over here. In real life, when you have areas that uh, are expected to have a lot of people, such as train stations or metro stations, you usually have a lot of shopping. 
And that is the effect that I've tried to replicate here by putting some commercial buildings. And then if you zoom in right into this little roundabout, you will notice this little pathway that will bring people all the way through this loop. Then it kind of goes uh, into a bridge that goes over this little roundabout that I've built and is handling traffic uh, very, very well. And you kind of start entering the next part of the town that I'm going to talk about, which is this gigantic mountain. Well, not gigantic, but this uh, very interesting uh, mountain that I have built in this location. And um, this, uh, the idea that I had in mind was pretty much this. I wanted to have a mountain where I would put a stadium on top that would have a view um, over the entire city. And that is the effect that I've tried to replicate here. And as you can see, uh, besides all the uh, destroyed buildings and also the fires that are going on, you can see this amazing view from the stadium that I really, really do enjoy. This is another area of town that I'm really proud of. Um, when it comes to terraforming, this gave me quite a bit of headaches. It was uh, really complicated to build. It involved a, a lot of trial and error, but eventually I've managed to pull everything off. And I've also connected everything with pathways. So uh, as we've seen, we have this pathway that connects to this um, cargo hub. But then I also have a lot of connections uh, that connect to this uh, main high density part of town. Then I also have uh, other connections. This one, for example, leads to this road and this one kind of goes under a tunnel that goes under the railroad that we have seen and it brings people all the way until the stadium. And from here you can either go left and as you can see we have uh, some people using it. You can go left and go and this here connects to the main part of town again. Or you can even go and keep going down until uh, this road well, where you have some commercial buildings or even go through this tunnel that connects here and it comes over here. And I believe it kind of connects to this one. Let me just uh, try and make sure. Yeah, there you go. And it connects to this area um, over here right next to the lake where we have some uh, some piers and also some uh, fishing uh, fishing docks, so to say. I have also made this artificial river slash lake and the way I've done this was by uh, terraforming some valleys that were as deep as the sea level and then connected um, the valleys to the river and then I just let the game run and I let it fill up naturally. It floods sometimes as we have already seen but um, overall I am satisfied with it. I think it looks pretty realistic. As we've seen, the stadium has a couple of connections. First, people can come here uh, by walking. When there's a game about to happen, you can see this pathway getting a lot of people who are coming from this part of town. And they are coming to the stadium. But people can also use this uh, monorail and because they have a station right about over here. And finally, they can also use this thing, the cable car stop. And this cable car stop is also another uh, very interesting thing that I have uh, in my town. It kind of brings people all the way um, to the top of the mountain. And it also leads them to the coastal area over here. So if I follow this line, you can see that um, it goes right on top of the highway all the way over here through our sunken park that I will uh, explain to you uh, in a minute. And it connects all the way over here on the coastline area. Also, we also have another end of the cable stop car. So if I keep moving through this direction, the cable stop car also goes and connects to this road. This is the end of the line here. And finally, of course, the final way people can access this stadium is by road. So we have a road connection that covers the entire mountain pretty much. Uh, and it's composed mainly uh, not only by these overground roads that you see here, but also through uh, some tunnels that I have kind of used to produce better connections without destroying too much 
of the terraformed work that I have done. Now that we're at it, let's just take a look at the status of our stadium. So if I click here, we can see that we have... Um, it says here that we have won two games and lost four games, but this is uh, highly inaccurate because I have this stadium for literally over a year and I've seen dozens and dozens of games, so it's impossible that we have only played six games. Perhaps this only records uh, the last six. That's the only explanation. This stadium is also a very powerful source of income because every time I participate in a game I uh, win uh, 3000 in money and if I happen to win the game I win an extra 260,000 uh, which makes a total of 290,000, almost 300,000. And this is actually one of the reasons why I'm able to maintain a positive income. In this area I've also placed a couple of things such as this uh, tall radio mast that you can see here. And uh, that's that provides radio coverage to the entire city. Then I also have a couple of fishing um, piers, um, such as this one and also these ones that I've talked about, and also a couple of commercial buildings to provide some shopping. And finally, uh, if I go a bit to the north part, we can see this huge gigantic building that I've placed here. This is the castle of Lord Sherpwick that came with the Park Life DLC. This is a monument. And I've decided that this was the best place to build it, right on top of a mountain. And look at that, I think it looks uh, majestic. I really like how it turned out. If I move a bit to the north, we will see one residential district, which is called the Delta 9K Square. By the way, this is something that I forgot to mention in this video, but um, all my districts are named after some of my subscribers. People who have been following me for quite a long time and have been uh, leaving a very positive feedback and comments on my videos and also criticism, so this is the way um, I reward them. So I'm not gonna talk about every single one of these districts, but if you happen to download the map, remember that um, all of these names are subscribers of mine. So this district is very peculiar because it's right between our uh, industrial site and also the main area of town, so this could never be wealthy residential suburb. But even though I have managed to build a very interesting shape um, adapted to the highways that we had here, so I kind of built this road layout taking into account uh, this uh, highway that was um, around it and also these avenues, these main avenues. And I've also happened to apply the RS ban policy to this entire district. So these buildings are higher than our industry, but not as tall as these houses over here. And even if I go here and I click on the level tool, we can see that all of them, all of the residential buildings are level four and they cannot upgrade to level five because, well, um, yeah, building cannot level up because RS buildings are banned. That was just something that I've used to uh, distinguish this district from all the others. And I think it looks good. It even has this thing in the middle, the ice hockey ring, that provides leisure to these entire buildings. Oh, and what we have here? We have a small congestion here. Uh, the reason why we have all of these things here, all of these trucks, by the way, are snow, snow plows. They want to take out the snow of this little segment of road. And this happens because this area tends to flood. Uh, sometimes uh, the water level rises and all of these buildings become submerged and also this road. So that's why all, all of these snow plows uh, want to take out the snow out of, of the road. I could easily fix this by erasing the, the terrain here, but I'm gonna leave it. I think it's a fun characteristic of this city. Alright guys, and moving on to the southern part of the uh, mainland, we start entering the high density areas of the city. And this city I wanted to make the uh, coastal area a residential zone. So if I enable the zoning you can see that's what happens. We have some commercial right alongside the um, avenue, the coastal avenue. And I even have these small shops right next to um, uh, the coastal area. And these are further decorated with some piers and also marinas, uh, some of the stuff that I usually make. I even put this prison here, 
on this terraformed custom island, which I think looks pretty amazing. Looks like a, a water prison, so to say. And I also put this unique building over here, which also comes with um, Park Life, which is the statue of Colossalus, which I believe looks amazing in this location. And I also have this boat museum. Overall, I try to make things that fit the area as much as possible, and I'm really satisfied with the result. Now, if I go uh, on and move a bit north, uh, the most peculiar um, thing or the most peculiar feature of this location is actually the sunken park that we have right here. So I was deeply inspired on the Central Park of New York City. Um, it's kind of a green area surrounded by big skyscrapers and I wanted to replicate that effect in my city. The difference is, instead of being just a plain rectangle, I've tried to make a, a varied shape. So, as you can see, let me just try and activate the districts. Yeah, this light blue district that you see is the shape of, of the park, so that's the shape that it has. And another peculiarity of it is that it's actually sunken. So, I've pretty much terraformed and made it below uh, the regular um, level where the buildings are located. So, yeah, overall I think it looks pretty amazing. I really like how it turned out. I even put some um, custom buildings that came with the game, such as this central park, which is this gigantic type building. And uh, later on, when the Park Life DLC was released, I even turned this entire thing into a sunken um, amusement park. So as you can see, this is the main entrance of the park, and as you can see, it's heavily populated with people. And I've tried to use, well. I didn't actually try, I've actually done it, I've placed every single building that uh, this type of park has to offer, such as for example here you can find the ferris wheel, which is uh, in a very central location, right on top of, um, or right in front of the main entrance, so to say, which I believe turns out and fits perfectly. Then I have this thing, such as the pendulum ride, I have a couple of, I don't know, plazas and also some uh, tool booths that you can see. Uh, we have an avenue uh, going right on top of the park, which I believe uh, is a nice feature. Then we have the roller coaster and also um, the drop tower right. And here on the corner, uh, I have put the House of Horrors. So this entire thing is an amusement park. It even extends uh, past to the southern side. So I also have an entrance over here. Uh, I've put entrances on every single corner of this uh, park to allow for people to enter from every single corner of, of the city. So we have another one over here and here are some more buildings. And another entrance here. And as you can see, I've placed amusement park buildings all the way across uh, the park. This is actually uh, the biggest park area that the city has, I believe. Right next to our nature reserve. And, and then we have another entrance here and another one here. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I've applied a bunch of policies um, and the district that surrounds the amusement park. Uh, one of them is higher taxes for both uh, residential, uh, commercial and also uh, office. Actually, if I open this, I have a better explanation. Yeah, there we go. I've also turned this into a big business manufacturer because uh, this is an area that attracts a lot of tourists. I've turned all the residential buildings into high-tech housing to raise the land value of the land. And finally, I attributed the smoke detector um, distribution so that this entire thing does not burn to a crisp. And this area is very easy to burn because, well, it has a lot of trees. So if you have been following my series for a while, you know that fires are very common. I bet if I zoom out, we will see a fire happening right now. Um, let's see. Well, for once I got contradicted, but uh, yeah, we got a lot of fires. I've also put some unique buildings to shape the skyline, such as, for example, the clock tower, the uh, observation tower, and also this one, the transport tower, which give a unique shape to the skyline, uh, which I really do enjoy. There's not anything else of relevance that needs explaining right next to the park area. 
because all of this all of this area is just high density buildings a mixture of residential commercial and also offices as you can see i've put a few unique buildings here and there to uh, add a bit of spice to the city such as for example this thing the expo center which uh, kind of gives um, a bit of personality to this part of the city it kind of breaks the pattern of having low area high buildings um, by placing an high area and very low building so i think this is a nice addition if i start moving to the left area we can see that i've dedicated this area predominantly to offices now office areas start uh, being a bit more common in sacrifice of residential and also commercial even though we can see a lot of commercial buildings on the coastal area uh, followed by a block of um, office buildings and finally right next to the highway we have a bunch of residential buildings there are some buildings here that are very characteristic of this part of town for example this is where i put my blimp depot i also have an opera house right about over here this is the place where i have a blimp stop as we have seen before and I've also put uh, the main university of the city here. So we have a total of two universities in the city and one of them is in this location. And I made sure it is very well covered by public transport. So as you can see, we have a metro station right here and we also have a monorail line that covers the entire city right about over here and a bunch of um, bus lines that go and bring people to the metro station. So this area is pretty much um, very well covered. However, by far the most characteristic part of the city is this uh, massive uh, intersection. Well, I shouldn't say intersection, this is basically a road system that brings people from the city to the highway and from the highway to the downtown area. If I activate the um, arrow lines in this intersection, you will see that this thing is very, very confusing. I'm not going to go into much detail over how this thing works uh, but I can just say that for example to get out of the highway to the city you have a lot of options you can go to the right side over here and leave and arrive at the city right about on this junction or you can keep moving forward and here you have another option of keep moving forward and leave right next to the commercial area or turn left and leave right about at this avenue and the same thing if you want to leave the city, you have also three um, places from where you can get out of this part of town and get into this uh, highway. Because I have so many access points to this highway, there is absolutely no traffic problems in this part of town. As you can see, traffic is flowing in this interchange very, very smoothly. Moving on to the north side of this area, there is nothing that really requires um, much explaining. I have another um, highway interchange over here that brings people uh, to this highway and to get out of the highway uh, right about over here that goes under a tunnel. That is um, kind of a mess, <laughs> so to say. A lot of people have pointed out that this is very uh, unrealistic and that it would cause um, it would be very expensive for this to build in real life and I, I agree this would certainly not be something that would be uh, buildable um, in real life unless it was extremely necessary I will keep your feedback in mind and on a next series I will try my best to not build as many tunnels even though they work amazingly in dissipating traffic but uh, yeah, this part right next to the highway is decorated with a bunch of trees, as you can see. Uh, I also have a, a bicycle lane that covers this entire uh, thing. Um, it goes right along the highway and brings people uh, alongside the city. So it's a an easier way to provide access to the entire city, so to say. Oh, and by the way, speaking of pathways, I haven't mentioned this, but I have a huge and gigantic pathway network that uh, covers the entire city. I like my cities to be walkable. I think um, it works very well in uh, dissipating traffic and also because I just enjoy and love to see people uh, using my connections. Uh, this is um, very pleasing for me to watch. But anyway, this pathway, for example, it connects every single block of our town. So if I come over here, you can see that we have an exit point over here and another one here and this highway for example 
can lead to the north part of the city and I can also go south and as you can see it pretty much has no end it provides access to the entire uh, longitudinal aspect of town right until the coastal area and I have multiple on and off points uh, that lead people from the city to this pathway so that's one of the reasons why I have so little traffic uh, problems in my city but anyway still in this area if we go to the north side we have a kind of a peculiar thing over here we have a secondary public transport hub that is composed of two train stations and one monorail station the train station that you see to your left is our regional train station trains that are coming from outside the city ditch passengers on this exact station from this station people can grab the elevated pathway that goes on top of both rails and from here people can get into the monorail station uh, that covers the entire line in a circular shape as we have seen or they can keep moving right to our second train station this station is one of the ends of the um how should i say it the local train lines that we have uh, connecting the entire city and from here people can go to two other stations located on different areas of city I've built this on the previous episode, episode 84, and some people gave me a suggestion which is to connect the elevated pathway to the backside of the second train station, which is something that I've totally forgot I could have done. So let me just do that right now. So from here is actually very very simple, I just have to select my pathway, make a connection connecting right next to the back of the train station, like this. Let's activate all the guidelines. Let's bring this stuff to the ground floor. Keep moving forward. Right until here. And finally, let's curve this and connect it here. Now people have a shorter way to go until here. And now we don't need this thing because people can just use this segment. Let's see if people actually use it. Yeah, there we go. Much better. If we keep moving west, uh, one way that I found out to break the pattern of buildings was by adding this uh, very simple garden. This is just a white area decorated with some pathways and also some trees. So there's nothing special about this. And the idea was to make this park dedicated to this uh, thing over here that is the oppression office, which I kind of see such as uh, I don't know, the courthouse or the main courthouse of the city. Or perhaps even the place where the mayor would live, who knows. But I believe it looks very majestic from here. South from the oppression office we have one of the most recent additions that I added to the city which is this winter themed park. The goal here was to add as many dedicated winter buildings as possible uh, to create a mega leisure district and amusement district. Uh, in this location and that's exactly what I've done I've put a lot of buildings just to name a few uh, we can check them out we have the slate right here let's take a look uh, we can even see a couple of people using it oh this guy kind of did a downturn and we have this thing the snowboard arena uh, I kind of would have wished that the stands would have uh, people in them right here it looks just um, very poor very abandoned but uh, anyway, we also have the Santa Claus workshop, the Christmas tree, the snow castle restaurant, the ice fishing pond, uh, the winter market and a lot more stuff. The corner area of the city has some very interesting aspects. Uh, first and foremost, I've decided to place some low density residential uh, on the coastline area right next to the commercial buildings. I remember at the time I've done this to balance the RCI demand, I believe that was the main reason and also because I wanted to have some expensive houses uh, right next to the riverside. Here you can also see the effects of my pathway network, for example you can see a pathway that connects this district to the winter themed park. Uh, I also have this um, um, curvy line that goes across the hill and connects people eventually to this part of town by the bridge. Still speaking about pathways, we can also see how the pathway cuts through the middle of the city and also over here as well. 
and this is how I maintain such a big degree of lockability in my city. If you take a look at uh, every single one of my, of my pathways, there's a very high chance that you'll see a lot of people using them, which kind of makes me happy. Then if we move on to the southern part, we can see that right about on this spot we have our second university. Again, with very easy access by public transportation. Then one of the most relevant parts of the city is actually this interchange. Here, um, this highway connects to this main highway uh, with this standard um, three-way interchange that came with the stock game. And I've also made a custom um, trumpet interchange here that connects to one of the main avenues of the city. But the most interesting part is that I have converted the area surrounding the interchange into a park, into a city park. I've done this because I wouldn't be able to maximize the uh, zoning space with so many curves and so many um, highways on and off ramps going uh, across the city and covering most of this area. So I've decided to make a park instead. And I believe that was a very creative and original idea that turned out quite nice. Uh, let me just check how much money this park is making. So if I ch uh, click on it, we are making an income of roughly 5,000 with uh, roughly 2,000 in expenses. So yeah, this is a very profitable park. And now that we're th thinking about it, let's actually go to our uh, second park, which, which is named after uh, Dashboard Ferry. This is the Dashboard Ferry Park. And we can see that we are making an income of 6,000 for an expenses. Uh, with expenses of roughly 4,000. This is a park where I have placed the most amount of um, park buildings, so that's why we have such big expenses. But the income totally covers it, so yeah. Alright guys, to finish up the tour of the mainland, I just have to talk about the northern part of the sea, uh, which, as you can see, is completely dedicated to low-density residential and also commercial. So these are pretty much the suburbs of our city. And that's the effect that I've tried to replicate here. This is actually the place where the um, pathway network is the most noticeable because, well, you don't have tall buildings covering them. And I've tried to make some interesting stuff in here, such as adding these uh, roundabout shaped pathways, which I believe turned out very, very well. Not a lot of people using them, but they look good and I like watching them. Right in the junction of our low density district, our high rise district and also our high rise band district, we have a lot of interesting stuff going on. First and foremost, we have our uh, train interchange that uh, connects um, three different rails. I've tried to make this as interesting as possible by um, uh, terraforming the terrain and making a sunken pathway as we've seen right on the left side. We also have a pathway that connects all three districts together, which I believe turns out very, very uh, effectively. We have a hospital and finally we have this uh, very interesting shaped district, which I believe is um, super cute. I've done this by only giving our buildings two blocks in length to grow and somehow they managed to come out uh, looking exactly the same, which I have nothing against. Across the river from the mainland, we have a small area with a lot of different things going on. We have a dedicated uh, residential district that you see right here. Uh, a bit up from that, we have a big nature reserve park that we'll talk about in a minute. Then we have some unique buildings that came out with the uh, Industries DLC. We also have a train station and we have a bunch of um, trash management facilities such as incinerators. The only access to this part of the city is through this interchange. This interchange connects to both the mainland and the leisure island and it's a bit confusing and takes a lot of space and this is because there's a lot of volume, there's a very big volume of traffic coming through here and I had to make sure it had all the necessary requirements to um, not to have any congestions at all. The volume is very very big as you can see, but uh, traffic seems to be flowing quite well. There doesn't seem to be a very big line of cars waiting, so I believe it has uh, turned out very effectively. The first thing that you see as you get out of the highway is this huge electronics factory right next to the roundabout. 
and if you go a bit north over the railway you will eventually arrive at a petroleum refinery or a oil refinery and also a modular house factory which is um, something that builds house parts I believe. In the center of the layout you have a lot of incinerators so I've divided the trash facilities of the city into two main locations this one and also the industrial complex that we have seen in the beginning of the episode. On the coastal area we have one of three fire helicopter depots. Finally on the railway we have a cargo station that brings raw materials to the factories that we have going on which then produce final products which are then exported at the cargo station to other parts of town and also to outside the city. Uh, on the other side of the railway we have a passenger train station that uh, brings people uh, to the residential district that we are going to talk about right now. Finally in this area we have a small residential district that is composed of um, high density buildings on the extremities and on the inside outside of the main roads uh, we have small density or low density residential. A lot of people didn't like this but I think it, it's really cool how the tall buildings uh, follow the shape of the main roads. Besides the train station that we have already seen on the upper side of the district, we also have a ferry stop that takes people from this district to the other parts of the city. Finally to the right side we have a massive or well not a massive but a very big nature reserve park. This park is uh, very interesting because um, what we have in the middle of the park, this uh, structural shape, is something that already comes with this base map, which is this kind of ruins or this template of ruins that I've then used to incorporate into the park. So the idea here is that this is an abandoned church or an abandoned castle, so to say, and people have used it to create a natural monument. As you can see there are even people camping there and um, walking through the ruins of the uh, castle. On the outskirts of the ruins we have this pathway that goes along uh, the entire area and it leads to very specific areas such as for example uh, areas such as this one which are dedicated camping and also sightseeing areas. So for example you can also see that one of the pathways leads uphill where we have a lot of viewing decks and also some towers where people can just uh, take the sights. We have this in other areas such as this one where we have uh, four dedicated areas for uh, sightseeing and on the middle on the crossroads we have some shelters. Overall I believe this park is uh, working very well because we have, uh, yeah we are making a lot of profit, we are making about 3000 in profit which is uh, great. Moving on, we have one of the most iconic areas of our city, which is what I call the Leisure Island. I gave it this name because I had the intention of putting a lot of unique buildings in it, as well as dedicated commercial and uh, leisure and also tourism districts where people could come and shop and spend a lot of money. So, hence the name. If we look at the left side of the island, what we have is our international airport. This thing gave me a lot of work to build because um, I had to pretty much terraform the terrain and my idea when I was building it was um, that I wanted to put in an elevated area, so an airport on top of the mountain so that uh, planes could take off and um, go over the buildings without um, worrying too much about crashing when they are landing or taking off. Right next to the airport or at the exit of the airport I have this small commercial building uh, where people can go shop uh, where they are waiting for the plane to go. I have surrounded the entire airport with fences so if we take a closer look we can see that uh, everything, the entire landing platform is surrounded with these uh, fences that came out with Parklife. Uh, over here we have um, something very peculiar which are the airport towers. I basically have downloaded two assets from the Steam Workshop and these are the only two assets that are not in the base game so when you download the game you'll pretty much have to download uh, both of these assets but uh, they will be the only ones you need to download. 
right below the airport we have this commercial slash uh, office district um, it's a mixture of both and I believe it looks uh, very very good it has a very unique and characteristic layout if we keep moving to the left we then have this um, very uh, characteristic shape this is a crater caused by a meteor so some time ago probably even a year ago a meteor fell down on this exact spot and left this crater on the terrain instead of terraforming through it I decided to keep it as landmark uh, and I even unlocked the meteor park which is this thing that you see here uh, when the meteor fell and I've decided to place it right next to um, the spot where the meteor fell still in the airport area there are some things that we could talk about uh, for example the unique buildings that we've placed in this location such as the Grand Mall and also this thing the Robotics Institute which is something that uh, came with the high-tech buildings pack that you can also purchase on the Steam Work. So keep in mind that if you are going to download the CD, you also need that pack. Another thing that gave me a lot of work was this uh, highway interchange that brings people to different corners of the island and um, takes people also from different corners and puts them on the highway. If we take a look at the off-ramps, we can see that um, it pretty much splits in three. There are three options, people can keep moving forward in this off-ramp, go through this loop and eventually arrive at the airport. We also have another way for people to go that kind of follows through this highway and brings people all the way over here. Uh, this highway goes around the airport and brings people to the commercial and office district that we have seen before. And finally, we have this uh, final uh, off-ramp, the one that is to the right, that people can go and go all the way over here. And here they have the chance to go left and go through this little tunnel that will lead to uh, the downtown area. Or they can keep moving forward and connect here to this avenue or to this district directly. Likewise, the off-ramps also pick people from different corners of the area. For example, this one that has a lot of traffic right now. Uh, grabs people from this avenue that you see here and also from this tunnel that connects again to the downtown area brings them all the way around um, under the highway and connects over here uh, people also have the chance to come from this uh, little thing that goes around in a loop that picks people from the, the same spot that we've seen before next to our commercial and office zone and finally people can also uh, come through this highway that uh, pretty much um, takes people from the airport into this highway. So yeah, this highway has a very high coverage, which as you can see, is very good at um, dissipating traffic. Likewise, we have the same similar thing on this side, even though here it's much simpler. We only have um, a couple of pathways that people can go through. In here, they can come all the way over here to this thing that goes over the highway and eventually arrive at the airport or they can go down and go through both of these tunnels that will lead people either to this side or to the downtown area of the city. And the same thing with the uh, on-ramps. Moving on to the densest part of the city, uh, I've split this area into several districts. First and foremost, we have a couple of uh, tourism districts such as this one over here and also this one. Then we also have a couple of leisure districts such as this one and also this big thing over here. Then we have a big central IT cluster district which is this one and finally we have a residential district. They all converge into the central and round area which is the Amish Gardner floating park. I've tried to decorate this area with as much unique buildings as possible to raise the land value of the area. So from left to right we have the, um, the spa hotel, we also have a casino, then we have the posh mall and also the frozen mountain. Then moving up to the high tea cluster district we have the science center right next to the high interest tower. And on one of my tourism districts I've put the luxury hotel which I believe looks amazing. Finally, we move on to the floating park. I gave it this name because even though there are a lot of roads cutting through this thing, 
you can pretty much get inside the park and travel through every single corner of the park without uh, ever crossing one street. And the way I've done this was by making a ton of elevated pathways. So hence the name Floating. This is a regular city park with a lot of city park buildings and the entire thing is surrounded with fences. So realistically you could never get inside the park without going through one of the gates. I have also put a lot of unique buildings here, more than I can uh, count, but just to name a few, we have the Hopra House, we have the Modern Art Museum, we have an aquarium and right on the center of the park we have the Cathedral of Planetood. In one particular place I have made the floating park uh, go over the coastal avenue, the most external avenue of the city. I've made this beach-like area with a lot of uh, fishing tours and also piers and also a pathway that, that goes alongside the river where people can pretty much come and relax. The building that you see on the middle of the river is another unique building called the Floating Gardens. You see how the word floating seems to relate very well with this park? People can access this area by going uh, through one of the two pathways that you see going over the avenue and without ever needing to cross a road, just as I've mentioned before. This park is probably the least profitable park in my city because it only has a profit of around 400 um, simoleons. When it comes to public transport, this area has several connections. First and foremost, we have two uh, ferry stops on either side of the island. We also have a couple of monorail stations. So this line over here that you see in pink uh, is the circular monorail line that covers the entire city and we have uh, two stops here. Then we have of course the airport and then we have a circular metro line that only goes through this island and we have a couple of stops at the metro and also on um, both tourism districts and also the floating park. And finally, we also have some external metro connections that connect to the rest of the city. Finally, we have a blimp stop here, the final, the last blimp stop of three that connects uh, this island to the mainland and also to our starter island, the first thing that I've presented to you in the beginning of this episode. And then finally we have these blue bus lines whose function is basically to bring people from very specific areas of the island and take them to the metro stations or other more general uh, public transport uh, options. The only exception is this pink line that you see blinking, it kinda comes from the north side of the town and goes right through the airport and then leaves through the bottom side. This is one of our regional bus lines that connects to the public transport hub. Finally, the only thing that we haven't talked about yet is this uh, little island over here that is located uh, in the middle of the leisure island and also our starter island. So let's talk a bit about that. So this area as you can see is fully composed of low density buildings and it's a combination of residential and also some commercial buildings. We have a highway that cuts the island right through the middle and we also have a monorail line that cuts the island through this location over here, it goes over the highway and leaves at about over here. This said, we have two major um, public transport connections that connect this island to the other parts of the city. Uh, the first is this one, the monorail line or the monorail station that connects to our monorail circular line and we also have a uh, ferry stop right on the other corner of the island. So both these two stations are very well distributed and uh, grab people from uh, different corners of the island. A lot of people have mentioned that this area in the middle uh, composing the interchange and also these roundabouts kind of resembles a face with the roundabouts being the eyes and this huge loop with the rock uh, looks like a nose and this is uh, kind of the mouth, I would guess, and uh, they right, it kind of looks like it. Just a fun detail of this part of the city. We don't have a lot going on in this part of town, uh, but the fact that all of this is organic and local produce. So all of the residential buildings are self-sustaining buildings and all of the commercial buildings are local and organic produce. 
which is a district specialization that came with the Green Cities DLC. Because of this, traffic in this part of town is very, uh, very calm. We have no traffic issues whatsoever. Uh, I even think the road network that I've made is completely overkill for this type of district, but oh well, better be safe than sorry. I've also developed a pathway network that connects the empty areas between buildings, because in some areas I left a quite a big gap between um, zone buildings. Uh, but I don't have a very complex uh, pathway network uh, composed of elevated pathways, just, uh, just like I have on other parts of town, because it's not justifiable. We don't have a lot of traffic issues in this location that justifies that. Finally, before I end this video and wrap up this series, I'm imagining this video is getting a, a bit long already, I want to give you an overview of the city, of the city stats. So starting off with traffic, if we go to this view, we can see that the average traffic flow is around 82 and 81 percent. I've managed to see it go all the way up to 84 percent and it might even go higher. And in some other situations, it can be as low as 79-78%. It is very situational, depending on the amount of cars that we have waiting on the intersections. Overall, I think this result is um, very good for a city that has 117,000 people. So yeah, I am satisfied with the overall result of the city. I am not gonna spend a lot of time uh, going through all of these views because some of them are quite basic. If you want, you can take a look at them yourself when you download this city. But one of the views that I wanna show you is actually the public transport view because this is something that people usually ask me about. So here we have it. These are the numbers that we are having at the city. The most used public transport options in the city are the buses and also the metros, as we can see which is quite natural because the entire public transit system of this uh, city is based on these two types of transportation. Then we also have uh, other types of transportation which uh, all have their respective numbers and some of them are not that used as I wish them to be. I think this, is, uh, this was one of the mistakes that I've done with this city which is using or forcing myself to use every single type of public transport when it wasn't necessary. So that's something to keep in mind for a future city. Finally, the last thing that I would like to show you is actually on this tab, which is the economy tab. I would just like to see uh, and take a look at our numbers. So all taxes are at 12%. And here on the bottom side, we can see the amount of uh, income and expenses that we are having. So yeah, you can see uh, all of these numbers. I am not going to spend a lot of time on these. If you want, you can pause the game and take a look at them yourselves. But here is uh, the normal tab. If we take a look, this is um, what's happening with residential. The same thing with commercial. So a lot of uh, our income is coming from uh, level three buildings because they are the ones who uh, make the most money our industrial and office tab. Finally, our industry tab. This is uh, where the majority of our profit comes from. So uh, as you can see, Unique Factories is granting a total profit of 120,000. And the old thing combined gives me a total of 120 and now 90,000. You see how that changed drastically. This is the reason why my budget fluctuates so much between positive and negative. Moving on to our public transport tab, we can see that all of the public transport means are incurring into a, a loss. So this is not optimal at all. But if I look at it, I don't think there's anything I could have done to prevent this. Perhaps if I have uh, limited the amount of public transport options that I have in our city, I would force people to use a very specific public transport line and that would make the income of that specific public transport uh, line to be uh, much higher than what it is right now. I could probably fix this by going through every single line of the city and adjusting the number of buses, metros and trains that every single line has, but that would take a lot of time because I have over 200 lines in my city. Uh, buses alone are uh, around 100 and I would spend, I would just waste a lot of time doing that. So it's just not worth it. 
but you can do that if you download the city. Finally, moving on to the income from tourists, we can see that a lot of them spend money on public transport. And finally, we have uh, the road tolls, which is pretty much empty because I don't have uh, any tolls. There are a lot of things that have worked out very nicely in the city, such as, for example, this one. We have an employment rate of 3%, which is amazing. But then we have other things that didn't work quite as well. So, for example, if we go to our tour step, we can see that nobody is using our hot air balloon tours. So we'd probably benefit more and save a bit more money if we just deleted this building. This is just to show you that the city is not perfect. Even though I spend a lot in the city, there is still a lot that could have been done to optimize it. However, I also believe that some of these issues are related to how the game works and how the AI works, uh, which is also not perfect. So there are some things that I could not possibly do anything about, such as, for example, the massive death waves that occur in our city quite unnaturally and also the random fires that uh, devastate the city from place to place uh, which are caused basically by zoning a lot of trees right next to buildings which makes absolutely no sense that we have that many fires. However, I believe this is what we can expect from a city that is played without any mods. I have basically tried to play the game with only the tools that the game gave me and this is the best that I could have done. And I hope that my future cities are going to be even better than this one. But anyway guys, that's going to be it for this tour video. I believe I have explained everything that I wanted to address. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. If you have done so, I know that this video is probably uh, going a bit long already. If you are interested in playing in this city, I will provide a link for you to download it on the Steam Workshop in the video description, but please keep in mind that in order to play it you will need to have all the DLCs that includes uh, Mass Transit, After Dark, Natural Disasters, Green Cities, Park Life and Industries, if I'm not mistaken. You will also need the High Tech Buildings DLC, because I have some buildings that belong to that DLC, so don't forget about that. Finally, you will also need a couple of assets that I have used in the city. You will need two towers that I have used on my airport and you will also need a custom park that I have made. I will provide all the resources in the video description. Finally, to wrap up this series, I want to thank you for watching all the way until the end. When I started this series about one year and a half ago, I did not expect I was going to get all the attention that I had and that was the main reason that motivated me to go uh, with this series all the way until the end because I confess there were moments where I just wanted to uh, leave the game and uh, reading your comments and listening to your feedback really motivated me to push forward so I have to thank you for that it's also very gratifying to me to know that I can help people to play this game a bit better and enjoy this game a bit better uh, I always get um, astonished when I hear people say that they uh, have downloaded the game because of me. They didn't even play the game, but they watch my videos. They stumbled across one of my videos and they decided to try the game. That's really something that uh, makes me happy to have that effect on some people. And yes, I'm really looking forward to the future. Perhaps we can even play some other games. But I believe I've said enough. And once again, I thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series and I hope to see you again for more City Skylines videos. Thank you so much for watching guys and as always, have fun! Yes.